Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to our hangout. I'm so excited. We have everybody here today. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just don't know. <laughs> well, we made through. Listen, the struggle. Just to talk about wine. Just to talk about wine. All right. So before we get into our topic today, which is uh, sipping outside the bottle is what I call it. So um, box wine, can wine, um, all types of containers and packaging wine is in. Um, we're going to be sipping that today. We could go uh, down the line and introduce ourselves. Tanisha? Hey, I'm Tanisha, Girl Meets Glass, and um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about the different wines that you can get. Um, this is a good topic for the summer because, you know, you want something a little different than just your regular bottle with the cork and taking the cork shrill and all that. So for your picnics, your beach trips, your pool parties, we give you um, a couple of options tonight. Next up, Melissa. Woo. Hi everyone, <laughs> Melissa, aka the Liquor Lady. It is my yes. first time back, probably in like six months. So I'm excited to see the other whining women. Um, I love everything that's non-traditional. I love canned wine, so super excited to uh, talk about some fun stuff tonight. Leslie. <laughs> Hi, this is Leslie, the Vino 301 Wine Concierge, and um, we're all things Maryland wine, but tonight we are going outside the box, and we are still looking at domestic wines, but um, something a little different and things you can bring to a celebration and personalize it. All right. Glennis? Hey everyone, Glennis Noir, and my treat this evening is for the sports lover, for the outdoor <laughs> person. Can this group pull and not worry about getting cut? Well, all right. Let's go. All right. Everybody, I'm Sarita. My blog is Buy Me Up. So, you know, can can we just talk a little bit about how um, how many negative connotations come with wine that's outside the bottle, or even just a screw top in general? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> like most people think of it like a joke. They don't look at it as anything that's like a serious wine. Um, mm -hmm. Because even something as simple as a screw top, people look at that like, oh my goodness, like what is this? Mm -hmm. Wine is a fine thing to be, you know, lauded right. and enjoyed. Like, mm -hmm. why are you putting the screw top on it? It feels like right. I'm drinking like a bottle of water. Yeah. Um. So, and box wine that got a bad rap from the '80s with the uh, rosé, the white for the Franzia. Yeah. Yeah. Because that yeah. stuff, well, uh, I mean, it just, it, just you know, whatever. <laughs> but I think today with um, people wanting to be more environmental friendly and be more eco friendly, they're coming up with other ways to package wine mm -hmm. or environmental purposes than also for transportation, just for it to yep. get around. Um, yeah. And it's also more cost effective if you put oh, it in yeah. something else. Like everything else is cheaper than glass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm anxious. So who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. So I picked up a few things. I was um, perusing in my local Total Wine, and I have a couple of things. And I think these these packaging little individuals are great for party favors if you want to give something away. And the first one is, can you see it? Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. I, got the I got the same one. <laughs> I got the same one. Awesome. Yes. yes. It's like a little sippy cup. Mine is right here. Oh, love it. <laughs> Y'all are so cute. <laughs> that was a draw. Yes. Great oh, minds think alike. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a um, California Blanc de Blanc, and it's by Sophia. And I thought it was just so cute, and it came with a straw, like a little sippy cup. Yeah. So it's a little sparkling. 
that goes really undetected if you're in oh. places where you can't bring good stuff. Okay. And I um, picked up this one. Also, can you guys see it? Wait. Um, uh oh. Oh, do it again. Pull it. Can Put you it see it in front of the camera? Oh yeah, I know. Copenhagen. Oh. Oh yeah, I know that one. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> Very similar. It has a plastic cap top, and then it, it's it's like the beer has a born on date, but this has a freshness by date, which is cute. Uh, oh, nice. It tells you, you know, how long you can have it, and this is a cute little travel thing that you know you just want a single serving, right. and take it with you, pop it in your purse or whatever. And then my favorite. I mean, it's, you went to the store. Right, girl. You drinking all this by yourself? <laughs> it's, it's a rough week, and today's only Tuesday. Right. Um, I was going to say, uh, you know it's Tuesday, right? <laughs> <laughs> this one is so cute. I don't know if you can see it, but on it, it says, Happy Oh, yeah. Cute. And it's etched in the glass. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then and? you can the person's name on it. Oh, cute. So they, they did. Oh, wow. I, do they have any that say congratulations? Like, do they have different sayings? They have different sayings. So oh, they have, nice. And I did try the wine. It's a Merlot. It's made by Windsor Vineyards in California. Okay. And it's not bad at all. It's actually good wine. So, um, and the nice thing about this, the price point I think was $14. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, you know, it's a nice gift and you can personalize it to someone and put your name on it and you can see the etching in it and it does come in congratulations and I think there's another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was the price point on the, um, the uh, Coppola, the uh, sparkling in the can? Um, I think that was about $9. So, I think okay. they were, so they were, Pretty reasonable. And does it come individual or does it come like in a four pack like or six pack like beer? Right. That's what I was going to It was individuals because it's funny. You know how when you go to the fine wine store or whatever you'd like to call it and they mm -hmm. have well, individual shots of spirits, this was yeah. also next to that. So you could. Uh, you oh, okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, you. All right. Right? I like Leslie. Leslie went shopping. All right. right. I did. We should have let you go last. <laughs> right. All right. Who's next? I can go. Okay. So, you know, I have to always try to do something a little bit different. Um, so, this is my packaging. If you can see this. Nice. Oh, wait. No. It looks it's, like uh, this is plastic? plastic. Yes, it's oh, completely wow. plastic and, you know, screw top. It looks like a water bottle. And it just, you know, unscrewed. Oh. And, um, yeah, so uh, it's a white wine and it's the literal meaning um, of table wine. This is uh, a community European wine. That is the quality level of this. So wow. no AOT wow. here. Um, but I like it. it? Do you think they can fuse it for a water bottle if you got on the airplane? Like, does it does it really, really feel like that? Oh yes, it definitely feels like a water bottle because, like, even the back, like, you see how the ridges are here. Like, it look like if I took the um, you know, label off, like that. I mean, it's too big. Like, if I put it in uh, my suitcase, like that will work. You know, it's too big for me to carry. You know, for me to carry on anyway. But like to go to parks, this is perfect to carry. Um, I'm actually going to refill it when I finish this with some better wine. And ah. um, this isn't bad. I actually tried this um, not too long ago because I saw it in the store and um, I was like, you know what, this would be perfect because we were having drinks out on the bridge. And, and not to brag or anything, but we were out on the Love Lock Bridge before they um, tore all the locks down. Oh. And, with some friends having some, um, you know, just some drinks and some food or whatever, because you can sit out there and just, you know, when the weather's nice, people just sit out there. So I thought mm -hmm. it would be cool to take it and, you know, see how it is. And it wasn't bad. Other people today said, oh, hmm, this isn't bad for what it is. Like, I'm not going to sit at home and pour a glass and be like, oh, this is delicious. <laughs> this is perfect. Let me put my feet up. Mm -hmm. But for when we're out 
you know, you all are sitting out by the lakefront or you're at the beach or you're, you know, you need something that you can carry very easily. This is mm -hmm. it. And price point, three euro. So. What? Wow. What? Wow. Euro. That's crazy. This yeah. is eleven percent alcohol and it's hundred and fifty centiliters. Um and there isn't I mean it's just it says blanc, so you know. Uh good luck trying to figure out what's on the label here. What this probably came from is they have um, you know, on the country in the most wine countries here in France, you can just go with a bottle and they'll just have like a tap set up and then you can just pour whatever you want in the bottle and then you pay for it on your way out. That's just how they do it. So you bring your bottle oh, from wow. home and that's just how you drink. So this probably stemmed from um, that. I wouldn't take this to like a housewarming or like a party like that, but you know, if you're out with your friends, we get together and go um, sit outside by the river and drink and have a baguette and some cheese. This is perfect for that. Oh, wow. Nice. That is my wine. Very oh, and it's on the crisper side. So I know it's just a blend of a whole bunch of grapes, but um, it's on the crisper side with a little bit of uh, lime, grapefruit zest, a uh, little bit of acidity there. Um, not a creamy flavor, more like tart and tangy. So you can serve this super chilled or even, you know, slightly warmed up from you carrying it in your purse. Hmm. So that is my one. All right. All right. Who wants to go next? I'll go. Okay. I'll go next. Oh, go ahead. No. It's all good. Listen. Well, okay. I decided to have a little bit of fun. Can you guys mm. see this? Mm -hmm. so this it's is, a box. It's a, oh my no, God. it's not even a box. No, it's, so it's the, the infinite monkey, monkey theorem. So it's infinite monkey theorem. You open it up, and it's four slim cans. Can you guys see these? Oh, it's so funny. I just saw that in my Instagram feed. And so I was like, oh, yep. this looks interesting. I didn't, I mean, I Googled, you know, canned wines because I am a big cider drinker. So I'll mm -hmm. drink cider kind of, you know, to relax and, re you know, kind of refresh in the summer. But I was like, hey, let me try a canned wine. I went into a wine store. The only problem was it was mixed in. So this is a rosé. So mm -hmm. it was mixed in with all the other rosés. And they have a Chardonnay as well. It was mixed in with the Chardonnay. So oh, I felt like they needed a special section. Um, but it's totally fun. It's got a monkey on the cover. Um, and it's it's from Denver. So they consider themselves an urban winery. Oh, okay. uh, let's see, four cans. Uh, let's see, four cans is a liter. So it's more than a bottle of wine. So, you know, mm. you're getting pretty much two glasses, 250 mm -hmm. mLs out of a can. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's just, you know, it says rosé wine, ridiculously good wine in a can. You can drink in it, made in America. Wow. So I thought it was a really fun taste. You know, the taste is, you know, this is not for the sophisticated wine drinker, somebody looking for uh -huh. that super $50 rosé. But yeah, it yeah. is, you know, if you're trying to substitute for cider, if you're trying to relax at the barbecue, if you're trying to hang out with your friends, um, the four-pack was fifteen ninety nine. Hmm. So oh, nice. completely good deal, totally fun, um, and I love that it's black. Like I felt like the yeah. marketing was super strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a very sleek look. It will definitely it catch your eye if you're looking mm -hmm. at everything else. It definitely was. So that is my rosé, the monkey theorem, the infinite so, monkey theorem from Denver. So, so Melissa, what's the distribution like on that? So did you buy that in like a total wine or did you buy that? Did you order it? No. So I, unfortunately, I was not as planned and could not, I didn't have time to order. Um, I would have had to pay rush shipping, but I went into a local wine shop, Corks and Kegs here in Richmond. Okay. Um, and they, they had it. They, um, you know, they just retail it all the time. They had a lot of boxed wines, um, things of that nature, but they don't have a place on their website where you can figure out where to find them. But I have a feeling you can probably get it in a total wine, but you can order online. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And so all I saw so far was a Chardonnay and a Rosé. I can't tell yet if they have a red, but I'm sure they do. Okay. Nice. Wow. That's nice. Wow. Yay. Very cool. That's all right. Great. All right, Glennis, what you got? Well, as you can see, it's lips <laughs> one. And 
they come in these PBA free. Can you see that? Well, you can see them. These PBA free wine glass type containers. The it's called zips because you. I don't know if you can see. You zip. Ha! <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then, wow. so you zip, you screw. <laughs> yeah, play on words. <laughs> if it's screw, woohoo! If you have wood and not glass, you set this. You set You're killing this me. Down. <laughs> it's one after another. <laughs> so you set this down, it becomes a coaster. If you ah. like that's up your tabletop or wherever you are, after you zip and screw, then you just tug and pull a little bit. <laughs> you need to do a commercial for them. You need to send them this clip. Yes. And yes. Uh, yeah, you need to send them this clip. Or do a video. Oh, me, sorry. YouTube. You yeah. tug a little bit to get a little re pressure release. <laughs> And then you have <laughs> your wine glass. Um, on all our series note, I'm just going to show you how this works. So you can reseal this if you want and screw it back on and nothing comes out after you open it. These come in uh, four different varieties. Hey, Stacy! Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> you made it! I'm so happy. Oh my God, y'all! That was so dramatic and just <laughs> traumatic. I just left the gym. Somebody. My hair is a mess. My hair's wet. It's a mess. The girl, you're fine. Anyway, she Hi, said lady. my hair's a mess. It looks like she just got it curled up. <laughs> it, right? it really does. It really does. No, it is so wet right now. But anyway, hi, ladies. I am so. I really apologize. It's been crazy, but. Anyway, I'm here. Yes, uh, please introduce yourself. Yes. Okay. <laughs> My name is Stacy Thomas, and I'm a wine broker, and I'm located in Nashville, Tennessee right now, but I'm actually from Birmingham, Alabama, <laughs> and uh, I went to college in Tennessee, lived in Atlanta for a while, and now I'm back in Nashville. Yay. Hooray. <laughs> I look so weird on here, y'all. This is Hey, wait, 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 is this your first time doing this? It is. <laughs> oh, so okay. Anyway, so what are we, we're talking wine, uh, where, I'm sorry, um, where are we? Yes, um, yeah, we are talking about um, uh, unique wines that are outside the bottle. The, the packaging is not a bottle. So boxes, cans, yes. glasses, canisters, whatever. So Glennis was... Um, giving her spiel about her, the wine of choice tonight. We didn't know if Glennis was talking about a wine or if she talked about something. Or a else. man. Uh, right, we <laughs> flipped it down. We screwed right. it up. Let me finish my and flip. flip it over. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so Glennis, so after you zip it and you screw it and you sit it on the coaster, what what's next? Uh, don't forget to post up. Yes. Yeah. I don't even know where I was. Um, you had put it on the coaster. Yes. Well, this comes. I would have to. It's. I'm oh, sorry. I'll let y'all finish. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I want to hear your story, Glennis. This is right. I feel like no. <laughs> I'm done. Bye, Glennis. I'm done. Go, Glennis. I will never forget the name of this brand, though. Zips. It will be forever at the top of my mind when it comes to <laughs> non-traditional packaging. It's good for varietal. You'll enjoy it. All right. Okay. So, Stacy, I know you just came from the gym. So, are you sipping something tonight? Um, I will be in a few minutes. I can, if I can get there. Or do we have to sip something that's in, in the different packaging, or we're sipping anything? Oh, uh, well, you know, you're our guest. So, whatever you're sipping. Um, let's see. I have wine all around my house, but anyway, this is something. Because <laughs> that was really close to you. 
<laughs> oh, this lady just messed up. Let me use another one. Yes, I tonight I'm going to open a bottle of, let's see, this is heavyweight Cabernet, but I do, I do have some, this is heavyweight Cabernet, this is, let's see, can y'all see that? Okay, this is yeah. one of the main brands mm -hmm. that I, that I work with and that I represent. So I'm going to open this here in a few moments. Um, this is in a traditional bottle, it's a 750 ml, however... Give me a second. I'm going to show you a wine, a pomegranate wine that's not in a traditional bottle okay. packaging. It's a bottle, but it's not a traditional bottle. Okay. So give me a sec. Let's see. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm not going to do that to y'all. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Yeah, I know I can't do that in my pajama bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't move around too much. <laughs> Once you get set, don't move. Okay, are y'all there? Right. Yeah, we will stationary. Mm -hmm. We're here okay, safety. this one. This one is. Let's see if you can uh -oh. see this. This one is um, an elephant. You see that? Oh wow! Oh Delta. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yes, I'm a Delta, so I love elephants. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my but my brokers just uh, represent these. But so this is this is not a box or you know um, can or anything else. But this is a different you know packaging. For wine, it's a pomegranate wine. It's delicious. It's uh, semi-sweet, so uh, flavorful. I got to be honest. I'm not a Delta, but I come from a family full of Deltas. My mom, <laughs> my aunts, my cousins. So you got basically something that looks red in an elephant bottle. So we are going to have to talk because I have right. to find this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is red, and it is in an elephant bottle. So, and it actually has a traditional cork, just not. Mm -hmm. um, just not the, uh, you know, uh, just not the packaging. But um, have you all talked about screw caps? Yeah, we actually have not yes. because we don't have. Does anybody, uh, Sarita? Uh -huh. I think you're the only one that hasn't talked about yours uh, uh -uh. yet. Do yeah. you have just a regular screw top for yours? I, or did, did, you... I did not have a screw top. No. Yeah. No. I heard Sophia. <laughs> so. so yeah, we hadn't talked about screw tops. No. Huh. Which I love, and they're awesome. Right. We just kind of went like the whole, like a completely different way with it. When we started thinking of, okay. you know, uh, packaging that isn't, you know, traditional, we just right. went, uh, you know, well, it's all the way I think in. Of screw cap, well, I think of screw cap as traditional now almost. I mean, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you know, if you're thinking about some kind of packages. Yeah. And, you know, I've come to find out in the industry that uh, the restaurants are really enjoying screw caps now. They're almost preferring yep. them because of the easy accessibility because, you know, they got to get those caps off in a hurry. And mm -hmm. uh, the caps are keeping uh, the wine good because, you know, the corks, you know, the corks can yep. get holes in them, air out, and then the wine just tastes like cardboard. It can ruin the wine. And so uh, at first um, the industry was really kind of up in arms about it. But I've come to find out now because a lot of my Italian wines, I'm looking at one of them now, they are – they have switched over to um, screw cap, and they didn't want to at first, yeah. and they were like, oh, no, it's never going to be big, and look what happened. It's big now. It's huge but now. I, I think, and this will be, I'll be interested, you know, in your guys' perception. I come from a retailer background, you know, in my professional life, and I agree. Speed of service, ease of use, you know, teaching an employee that's 25 years old to use a corkscrew is difficult. <laughs> um, but it seems like there are certain varietals that are, it's accepted, you know, Sauv Blanc, Pinot Noir, but it, you know, still the Chardonnays, the cabs, you know, you just still don't see, um, you, you see the cork finish much more often than anything else. So I don't know if you guys have seen that sort of cross into these mainstay varietals, but I just haven't really seen that as much. Here's the thing I think with that and like the argument, like I've actually heard people like legit having this argument that um, uh, there are some wines, if they need to be aged or need to spend any kind of time in the bottle, then they need to be under a cork, as opposed to if they're a cork, if they're a um, screw top, then they can't age. Now, there are some people who think like, oh, it's actually better aging in a screw top, um, but there are just some things that happen with the cork that don't happen with um, a wine that comes mm -hmm. under uh, a screw cap. So. Mm -hmm. That's why some things and like some places are not going to, um, you know, go to a screw top. If you want your wine to age, mm, 
like we just screw tops aren't they haven't been around long enough for us to really know how it affects the wine over a period mm -hmm. of time. Like we haven't tasted any twenty year old wine that's, that's under a that's strap. True. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. Tasted right. like maybe five. So we don't know what it's like. So I think in the future you might see it happening more often because a screw cap is much, 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 much cheaper than a cork. And then you it's also much better for the environment because there are only so many trees that you're getting this cork from. So yeah. eventually yep. we're probably going to deplete that supply. Mm -hmm. yep. But yeah. you have places like New Zealand that is like completely, they like the whole country is like, no, we're only using screw tops. We're not yeah. doing nothing else. It's a screw cap and that's it. Yep. yep. Um, and a lot of Australian wines are like that as well. Hmm. Wow. Have you seen Zorks? Mm -hmm. oh. the, 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 the yeah. The synthetic yeah. or? They're Zorks, the plastic, the plastic ones. The, yeah. yeah. And then you can reuse them yeah, over. Yeah, keep mine because you can reuse them. They fit yeah. most bottles. Yep. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's That's similar cool. to the top, stop, top, excuse me. Where the wine does last a little longer because mm -hmm. sealed. Okay. So, have you seen Zork in a lot? Like, I've seen Zorks in um, Maryland wine bottles and like Maryland wines. That's where I first have came. You? To, yeah, that's where I first came to know about Zorks from Maryland wine. Huh. Yeah, that's where I've seen them. But supposedly, they're also popular in New Zealand as well. Oh. Oh, wow. that's the winery that I know of that uses it a lot, that's where they first got their Zorks. Okay. Ah, cool. Interesting. I gotta check that out. So I will talk about my wines now. So I have, Leslie already did, uh, I had three, but Leslie already talked about one of mine. <laughs> right. But <laughs> super so, shoppers. So right. I'm going to skip that one. Okay, so my first one is a can Pinot Grigio Yay! Underwood. Yay! I met that one. I tried Did to you? That, I couldn't yeah. get in time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so this is from Oregon, and this is um, Pinot Grigio. And I want to read the back because they have hashtag pinkies down. So no pinky up when you are drinking underwear Pinot Gris. Oh, so, that's so cute. <laughs> and they do, they do make bottled wines, but they have a can line. I think it's a... Pinot Gris, a rosé, and I think it's a red. I can't remember what it is, but yeah. they do make them in bottles as well. But I think. Their, this is their canned wine. So. That's cute. So it's really cool. And actually, this was my favorite. This was pretty impressive to come out of a can. And I don't know, you can maybe get two glasses out of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe really? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, lots of peaches, pear. It has a lot of acidity and a small, small bubble. Not like not enough for it to call it sparkling, but it has a small bubble when I first opened it. Okay. But, um, it's I if if I if I didn't see this, I would be shocked that it came out of a can. So, and that was one so thing I was wondering about canned wine. Like, do you get any yeah. of the flavor of the can? Because I thought like that um, might come across. This wine is so because sensitive. Because it's a white, it, I don't think I mind it. You know what I mean? Even okay. if it does yep. a little, because it's that metallic. I don't know that stainless steel that I'm kind of used to, so mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't even notice it in a white. So I don't know. Yeah, same with I aluminum. agree. If you had that um, rosé, did you I get totally any that? I totally agree. Not so much aluminum, but it's very tart and tangy for a rosé. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think it's the style they made it. Um, yeah. But I don't know if it's aluminum or not. So okay. yeah. Right. Right. All right. So this is my second wine. Ugh, this is my box. Can you see it? Loft. Okay. Loft. Okay. That looks like the Ann Taylor logo. Okay, so Loft Merlot, yes. <laughs> and it says um, their um, their logo is Loft Wines Elevated. Oh, right. isn't, that cute? Mm. isn't that cute? So That's this is a box, cute. and this is uh, this box is equal to four bottles. Mm. Yeah, people sleep box. Four, <laughs> four bottles. Yes, <laughs> four bottles. Four bottles. Wow. And this was oh, this can was ten dollars. Can was ten dollars. What? Yeah. Oh, for the one yeah. can? The one I can. I expect for the wines to be cheaper. Right? I, Not always. I, I that thought Underwood, so. did you have to get yeah. like a pack of 12? Like what size no. did you have to order? That's one one can. Just a single can? One can. Oh, wow. Just a single can. Girl, you can. I'm carrying my bottle. Right, right. So, and Loft, in comparison to this box, this was $20 and it's four bottles. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, wow. 
<laughs> I like the and box, box lines too. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sarita. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the box and the bag and everything is completely sustainable, so you can recycle it. Um, the Merlot is not bad. It's a nice cookout wine. You want something red to go to your burger or, you know, you want something to drink on a daily basis that's not going to be very expensive or you always have friends come over and you're serving spaghetti or lasagna or, you know, da 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 this is fine. I mean, it wasn't. It's not super impressive, but it is. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So, but I like when you're talking box wines, though. Like, I don't. Um, like some people, are like, oh well, you know, I've had better wines, or I like it better in a bottle. I think when you any of the wines that we're talking about tonight, I don't think that it can be looked at the same as you would say look at like a Grand Cru Burgundy. Or, you know, something along those lines. I think all right. of these wines are things that you're using on, like, a much more casual basis. Right. And, um, you know, not to be confused or compared with necessarily, like, fine wine. I think all of these, everything that you described are things that I actually really like to try and really like well, to taste. I have mm -hmm. to say, I okay. have to say, at Total Wine, they had a peak pool in a box that was $30. I was shocked. <gasps> I was shocked. Wow. People in yeah. the box only like people in the box. I took a picture. I took a picture. I'm gonna, I'll put it on my blog. It's gonna be a slideshow of all the boxes that I saw. I was amazed. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I mean, to Tanisha's point, I, I think it's crazy, and I'm definitely not a wine snob. I'm, you know, I'm a cocktail lover and wine mm -hmm. liker. But <laughs> for me, <laughs> get off the call. <laughs> <laughs> we got to appeal to everybody. Exactly. You know, I mean, for me, though, the canned wines, looking at Underwood, looking at Flask, that was another um, sort of aluminum. Oh, yeah, Flask, yeah. Canned mm -hmm. wine. I couldn't find it. but And then looking oh, at Monkey one. Theorem, I just, you know, the marketing is really there. It's sexier than a lot of the, the package stuff. I, I mean, for me, you probably will see me show up on a lot more hangouts with some canned wine or something odd. Because yeah. it's, okay. it's, so, it's totally approachable for me. Like, it works. The flavor profile works for me. Do you think that it's a package to, it's generational? Where a millennium would purchase it? Mm, that's a good I question. I do. Hmm. I mean, if, even if you think about some of the traditional packagings, like Jam Jar and some of those, like a lot of the brands that are going after millennials, they've done a lot of the same stuff. Um, I just think it's awesome that I can carry around wine in my pocket, in my purse, you know, yes. that it's, it's approachable. Um, you know, and honestly, it fit on the shelf in my refrigerator. I know that sounds crazy, but that is one of the things I hate with a regular bottle. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to figure out how to turn it sideways and adjust the shelves. I'm like, shoot, mm -hmm. this four box of cans fit right, the, right in the uh, refrigerator right. door. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and guys, cool. look what I found. I found a bottle of flask. Ah, oh, that up. oh, wait. Is that it? That's it. Oh, wow. See? It looks yep, like a mousse see? or something. It's super that's cool, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, wow. that's not like hair product. It looks like, like a hair right. product. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what it could be hair product, but this is a flask Merlot. And actually, it's pretty wow. good. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's in a um, aluminum bottle. Hmm. Okay. Can I see that? Okay. Yeah, and it's actually pretty good. It says it's fourteen one point one percent alcohol. Oh, that's hot. All right. Yeah. yeah. Get it in. Okay. All right. And it is one hundred percent recyclable. Okay. Uh -huh. Nice. Is that yeah. California? Is it California? Juice? It's. Uh, let's see. I believe it is. Let's, let me just make sure. Yep. I see oh some yeah. Napa Valley. Front. JT Napa. Wines is an innovative private winery in Napa Valley. Yeah. There you go. Oh wow. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, dope. Stacey, I have a question for you. Can you tell me what a wine broker does? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone always asks me that. So, um, what I do as a wine broker is, I say, for instance, you have a winery, Sarita, and you're in Germany. And you say, okay. hey, I have some amazing, you know, I don't know, Rieslings, Gewürztraminer, mm -hmm. and I want them distributed or sold. Mm -hmm. in Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, yeah. whatever, and I'm not currently, right, right now, I can't find a distributor, I don't have anybody there. <clears throat> what a broker does is um, we work on behalf of you, so I, mm -hmm. I help to find you a distributor. Uh, and my territory is Georgia, oh. Alabama, and Tennessee. So oh, wow. I find you a distributor, and, um, and then after I find you a distributor, I work with a distributor to, uh-oh, what happened? Oh, what is that? 
Sorry. Oh, no. Okay, you're back. Okay. okay. So okay. after after I find you a distributor, then I work with the, the distributor to get you <coughs> into stores, the restaurants, market. basically to oh. get you distribution. Yeah. yeah. So I basically oh, work because you know a lot of these wineries are you know they're out of the country and they don't have mm -hmm. time or the budget to come over to Tennessee all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, basically, you're like a rep for them, but you you brokered them to be sold in the state in the first place. So oh, nice. I do a lot of the, I help them do a lot of the paperwork, clearing it with the state, getting their their registration done, um, you know, getting the right pricing. Because a lot of times they're like, oh, we want to be fourteen ninety nine. Well, guess what? Tennessee state tax has a 505. Mm -hmm. There's like another state tax of 505. Then there's another state tax for on premise of 305. So when you do the FOB and all that pricing, you can't be 1499. You're going to be 1799. So oh. you're going to have to lower your FOB. So a lot of that pricing in the very beginning is what I help them to to get to the pricing they want to be on the shelves, which is a big deal because you can't come out the gate being overpriced, and, mm -hmm. and you know that's going to that's going to you know definitely impact the sale of the brand. So I do all that stuff with them up front and then find them a distributor and then I work the streets with the distributor. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah. See yeah. Stacy, mm -hmm. this is it's crazy, but um I've done the supplier side, I've done the retailer side and I just recently went to work for a broker. On oh the wow, really? So, nice. Yeah, but uh, we'll definitely. It's a total new world. It's amazing to see the different laws in the states and just exactly. you know helping these small brands get into the market. So exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's about helping the small brands who want to be the next Grey Goose. They want to be the next, you know, E and J Gallo or yes. Barefoot or you know they want to be the next big. Thing and so you're helping and and so that's why in the very beginning, uh, I was kind of grandfathered in, so I had a lot of brands immediately. But when you're first starting out, that's why I tell people don't quit your day job because it is definitely a process. You have to have a lot of brands to make a living yeah. off of it because you're getting anywhere from 10 to 20 percent off of purchase orders. So every time um, a distributor orders. Um, you know, the wine from the winery, you're getting a commission off of those orders. Uh, mm. And then sometimes you're getting commission off of the cases sold per month. It depends. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. 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 Uh-
or it's red. I'm not too fascinated about it's white. Um, I'm a big sports fan, so most sports fans love this for tailgating because you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. disposing of any glass box. Mm -hmm. um, you can play around with this particular packaging because it's in it's in a plastic glassware that's reusable. Mm -hmm. You can actually fill. You well, know, I don't think Zips would like it, but you can fill it up with some wine that you might want to take. <laughs> yeah. That you might like better, or some favorite mm -hmm. varietals, or some favorite other brands, and put it actually in the particular container. Um, I like the Merlot and the, um, the Cabernet. It has a lot more flavor to it. You know, the tannins actually preserve it a lot better. <laughs> the um, the I, you know it, it it's a really did you order it from Zips or did you did you have like a store order it for you? Did you, oh. did you hear me? Did you hear me? I'm here. Oh yeah. Did you order it from Zips? Like did you order it online okay. from Zips or did you have a store order, order it for you? I ordered it directly from Zips. Oh, oh wow. okay. Oh, so how did you come to find out about them initially? These are six ounce containers. And if you order a twelve pack of these, um <coughs> and a variety twelve pack, it's about three seven hundred and fifty meter milliliter bottles. Oh wow. That's a lot of zipping and screwing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> and dip it on the coaster. <laughs> so Screw it. About Let it on the coaster. Thirty-six to forty dollars for the box. Oh, okay. I found out about um through a through Mohegan is a casino up in Connecticut, and they were one of oh, wow. the premier um vendors. Oh. This nice. was also featured. Actually, they landed one of the biggest deals on the Shark Tank with Kevin O'Leary. Oh, oh wow! For over two point five million dollars. Wow! Go ahead, wow. Zips. For most, I don't know. A lot of people don't know. I'm an environmental scientist by education, and this particular packaging is PET. Which is polyethylene dilate, which is one of the. It's a recyclable type of plastic that's used for sodas, juices, baby bottles, and that, that those type of containers. The zip itself, as you saw earlier, is what preserves it because it's almost like a vacuum seal. So gotcha. you zip the outer container, uh, the outer piece of um, plastic. Then you, again, you screw it off and then you pull off a seal. Um, the actual reds themselves are very fruit forward, but all four varietals seem to have a lot of acid. Mm. The um the the whites almost I mm. you're not a fan is overwhelming. So <laughs> okay. you don't get a lot of the um uh, fruit profile on it. Okay. I um mm. I prefer the reds in this line and um and it's pretty, it's pretty good if you want to tailgate and carry just everything everybody else did. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. oh. Somebody just walked through the forest? Come what happened? Wow. I don't know. That I have no idea. <laughs> Leslie joined. Sorry. We've got two Leslies, though. Oh, two Leslies. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Hey, Leslie twice. Oh, Leslie Hi, just wants Leslie. to see herself at a different angle. That's right. Hey, I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm not sure she knows though. <clears throat> oh man. 
Well, that was interesting. Thank you, Glennis. Right. Yeah. yeah. The wow. new Zips rep is named Glennis. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, we cutting this up, and it's going to be a commercial. So your first description is definitely <laughs> they uh, video on their website. So you can talk to them about your residual income from, right, from right. playing that video. Uh, yeah, right, over right. and over. Nice. So um, one thing that I want us to kind of go back to a little bit because we didn't mention it too much. Um, we were because now um, with goodness giving us all that scoop on um, exactly how that glass was made um, and like how that's a little more environmentally sound or whatever. We didn't talk about that that much in relation to the box wine um, that Sarita had and that a lot of us see as far as you know wine and boxes and that kind of thing. So um, Sarita, I don't know if it has anything on the box if you want to comment on just how boxes are a little maybe better for the environment or how they're better for the wine itself or anything like that. Um, well, this is saying that, um, so this is a certifiable um, winery in California. And like I said, the packaging is completely recyclable. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, there was and all their packaging, well, this, these alternative packaging uh, creates a smaller carbon footprint than glass. So, okay. and even white, the wine bag is BPA free. Glennis, I, I do not know what that stands for, but I know that's a good thing, right? Yeah, BB. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's like be... baby bottles and water bottles and stuff, right? There you go. <laughs> Of what I endorse and what I don't endorse because of the job that pays me. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, this is right, not right, an like endorsement. That. This is an That's explanation. Right. So we just gonna yeah. go on camera but, to say that on your behalf. That's All right. right. That's right. The Personal opinions BPA, only. Uh, there you go. Yeah. And BPA has a connotation of having con carcinogens. Oh, BPA. BPA has a connotation of having carcinogens associated with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that came out in, never mind, we're not even going to the whole story. But so, yes, if it's BPA free, it's technically supposed to be better. But as you know, folks substitute other chemicals when they can't use one that has been yep. taken. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> got it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see this seal, but when I tell you it's like no spillage, I don't know if any oxygen or very little oxygen is getting up in this bag. So I think is it's that gonna... a spigot? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like um uh, like water. Yeah, can yeah. you see it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And that's and kind of the so cool thing it's, about box really, wine. It's really because... tight. It's really tight. I feel like that will last longer than a bottle. I mean, and not just yes. because it's four yeah. bottles in there, but like just the yeah. flavor of it will yeah. um, hold itself uh, better. Yeah. Yes. Because mm -hmm. like you said, it's less oxygen getting in there. Mm -hmm. And then the fact yeah. that it's, I'm assuming, vacuum sealed in that little right. plastic pouch that's in the box right. anyway. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And that's the thing I always say, you know, kind of for cans, you know, you think about beer, and there are a lot of mm -hmm. the big brewers that are talking about cans are better. You know, it doesn't let in light. Um, you know, it keeps all the air out, you know, mm. from destroying your beer. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if the same is for wine in a can. You know, yeah. it's obviously mm. not letting in air, not mm. letting in light, you know, all those mm. great things. So to right. me, it would make sense that canned wine actually should taste fresher. Mm. Okay. But you know but what? I, the difference is, too, I, don't you find that canned beer tastes different from bottled beer? Bottled beer, it yes. Does. It, is it different. does. It tastes yeah. different. You know what it is? It's because the lining inside of a can is a chemical. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Yep. <laughs> We're all like, uh, oh, like, like. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes different. It absolutely does. But what I'm amazed by, though, for beer, there's kind of that born on date or that used by date. And mm -hmm. my bottles of wine don't have such a date that I can find. Oh, no, I don't have that. No, there's no date. But I feel like there should be a date. This can't be good forever. <laughs> what the can? <laughs> Maybe yeah, the, the date. This right here. Does anybody I else have that has a, a can have a date? Hold on, y'all. Well, um, my, um, my bottle had a, a date. <laughs> my mini bottle. Oh, okay. Your bottle has a date. It had a date. 
Okay. But I hmm. also want to share with you guys. I was at um, Hi. 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 Oh. Hi. and um, Hi. one of the wineries. To um, dispense their wine. So instead of doing the traditional wine bottle, they were using kegs. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I got you. I can't hold it anymore. Hey, Mr. Baby, so much. This has to be yeah. the most hilarious thing we've <laughs> ever. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Sarita, since you're on, Sarita, you can mute it. Since you called. Oh, yeah, oh, somebody else oh, wait, can mute it. Oh, wait, you can mute it. Oh, let me figure out how to you do that. You can. Yeah, you okay. can. Just above, like, where her picture is, just click the mute. Like, yeah. roll wait, over it. Oh, Tanisha took care of it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Tanisha took care of it. I got it. Okay. You got it, girl. Okay. okay, Leslie. Did you say, did you, no, Leslie, did you um, finish out what you were saying? Uh, yeah, pretty much. But for those who missed it because of the um, <laughs> halftime entertainment, <laughs> what I was saying was um, even wineries are now going to different methods to sell their wine on bulk and so mm -hmm. they're using mm -hmm. kegs which is perfectly yeah. legal to um, dispense their wine and it's less for them to travel around because they don't have a whole bunch of bottles and cases that mm -hmm. they have to use mm -hmm. and it's okay. still keeps it very fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So <clears throat> I'm also wondering since we're talking about this how um, how are you talking about the difference between bottled beer and canned beer um, and the difference between like uh, canned wine, bottled wine and now since there are places that are doing wine on tap yep. and mm -hmm. how um, mm -hmm. that affects the flavor. Uh -huh. um, whereas I feel like beer isn't necessarily as reactive to you know different elements um, like wine is. I'm just wondering how that you know adding that extra gas in there that you know you need for the wine to go mm -hmm. and um, you know work in the tap how that affects it. Since mm -hmm. we are talking packaging and since Leslie mentioned keg, yeah. I know they're using the kegs for um, right, that. Right, right, right. I mean everything that I've heard and you know I've used it sort of in my past professional life. Um, sort of that tap wine was actually better than the mm -hmm. bottled wine. It tasted mm -hmm. better, um, but we were also at a much, we were at a higher price point, mm -hmm. not the lower one. So mm -hmm. I always thought yeah. tap wines would be the inexpensive ones, and they weren't. They were the premium wines. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, for me, what, everything I tasted was actually at a higher quality and a higher price point than the bottle. Um, well, the only thing is, that I, uh, um, I tasted a sparkling wine on tap, and it didn't have a bubble. Whoa. So that was my that was my only thing, yeah. Because I was no. I was with Tanisha actually. Um, right. So that means it's not sparkling. That's what that means. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's absolutely it's like, not sparkling. It was supposed to. It would be to. like prosecco on tap, but they call it to call it like, glacier, whatever, gl glare, something with a G, glare. Mm. But wow, it had no fizz. I mean, that probably has to do with the it lines was, it that tastes, they were it using. Tastes, it tastes right. flat. It tastes flat. flat. Yes. It was probably sitting in a line. Yeah, the lines mm. were probably not oh, they didn't have yeah. appropriate carbon. or clean. Mm. Or they didn't have the yeah. carbon dioxide on. They didn't have the... Ah. Because uh -huh. there are some special like lines or configurations that have to be used when it's uh -huh. carbonated for, oh. for sparkling on tap. So I have to try it again. Right. Yeah, it's, it's an excuse to drink it again. Okay. And I was getting ready to say the wines that I have, I've had on tap had too much petulance in it. So that was like a lot red of bubbles. and white, so it's just a lot of bubbles. And I was like, ah, y'all yeah. need to turn down the CO2. So yeah. I experienced the total opposite of what mm -hmm. mm. Maybe that's something they need to work on a little bit, just like um, trying to figure <laughs> out how much is too much and how much mm -hmm. is not enough. Yeah. Um, cause they would need, cause they're giving it, I'm assuming they're giving it CO2 to make it, you know, come through the tap anyway, if I'm understanding yeah. how it, you know, works. Right. And so just trying to get it to come up, it, they're using some, but trying to get the right amount so it can retain its fizz as it comes up, but not to give it too much. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, you know, <clears throat> have any at all. And then trying to manage that against the other steel wines and how, you know, they're yeah. doing that. 
So. Well, I was going to say to Melissa's point about how the higher end price points are in those, if you look at some of the box wines, they also have a higher price point than your traditional bottling. So mm -hmm. it's not always the assumption just because it's in the box is going to be cheaper. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the price point is higher for those. Mm -hmm. And you know why that is because you have so many more components to it. Mm. You, you have that inner piece of plastic, um, the plastic film, then you have mm -hmm. the box, then you have the spigot. Mm -hmm. So you have three components compared to not the wine. Yeah. So add the wine to it, that's four components. Yeah. In the bottle, you have the cork in the bottle. Yeah. Right. And you also have more bottles in a box. Right. So, exactly. you know, add yeah. all that in there. Sure Most that. box wines give you three and a half, four bottles inside right. of that box. So, yeah. You know, yeah. once you start adding that together, like 25 for a box, 30, 40 for a box isn't that bad. That's breaking right. down, uh, you know, 10 and under for per box. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. So back to something Tanisha was saying before, help me understand. It seems like there's a huge perception issue with these cans and these boxes and these, you know, in Tanisha's case, these water bottle wines. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean... You know, if there's a value there, there's convenience there. I mean, what do you guys really think is driving this somewhat negative perception around these formats? People are resistant to change. People are resistant to change. And if you think about it, the French mm -hmm. have laid the groundwork on what the standard is for wine, mm -hmm. and that has been a glass bottle and a natural cork. Yeah. So yeah. when you start moving away from that, you're messing in their pockets. It's economic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. good point. Good point. More accessible to not only the elite now, and you're changing the whole wine game. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like it should be changed. I feel like the wine industry is so far behind everybody else as far as the beverage being developed. For wine being like an older beverage, like why is it so far behind? Where is their packaging, their marketing, their message? Like why is everything, like keep the technique. We're not taking yeah. anything away from what you're putting in the bottle and from what, you know, you are creating. But make it, like put it in something that, like just come up to date. Put it mm -hmm. in different packaging. Try a different mm -hmm. label. Like market it yeah. differently. differently. And to yeah. say you know what that for is. them to continue marketing it yeah, to yeah. who they're marketing it to. Like, okay, mm -hmm. you have a certain age group drinking your wines. All right, well they gotta die eventually, no shade. But like, so then what? <laughs> Who's gonna drink your beverage? No, those are really, that's we're a really we're talking a whole industry point. is gonna fall apart because yeah. you're marketing to people fifty and up. Not even just people with money, because you have people, you know, so many people making money, but you're not even marketing to elite as far as money. You're marketing yep. to older people right. who are already right. drinking it. Yeah. Or people who are in the know. Because mm -hmm. wine and marketing, like, do they really do marketing? How many commercials do you see on TV for wine? But you hit over the head well, in their commercials all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, that's a whole other <laughs> hangout. We get into a whole yeah. other topic. Uh huh. But as far as packaging goes, like, you know, if you're talking France and Italy or world wines, they are very hesitant to and very change. resistant to any kind of change. Like Glenna said, they just are not here for it. They won't change the label. They are like, nope, glass bottle with the broad shoulders or with the sloping shoulders. And that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. For the Little ones that do crew top, like Little. they made those a lower price point because people are not buying them. They mm. super traditional. So yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, that was now, deep. It was, I mean, it was. And I've been able to see some other things as far as French wine because I'm here. I guess when it comes to them taking those wines and sending them other places, it might not be as economical for them to do that. Like, mm -hmm. um, I was mentioning to Sarita while we had um, a little downtime about how uh, Gerard Bertrand, who is a very well-known, like, importer and producer um, of French wines that come to the States, and yeah. how they, um, I saw some box wines from um, Gerard Bertrand, and, the, and I was just in the grocery store here. Wow. And there are other shops that have uh, box wines, and their price point was anywhere from 15 to, like, 25 mm -hmm. euro. Um, but those are things... 
that those are things that you just won't see that won't make it to the state, so you won't know they exist. There are some screw tops that I do see in the store. Um, this yeah. plastic bottle that I have, well, clearly that has a screw top because if it had a cork, well, that would just be dumb. But <laughs> um, so they do exist. But when you start talking about getting it over to, we'll say America, I'd imagine like that isn't like it doesn't make sense money wise. Like Glenda's mentioned, um, money was yeah. a big issue. Even so, right, yeah. Man. When you start importing and you're looking at freight and you're looking at currency exchange yeah. and all of that for especially for a small producer, that mm -hmm. is a daunting task. And then they really do have to sign up with an importer um, unless they want to handle all of those direct sales. So yeah. that, that's that's the main reason why the Stelvin closure was created, which is the screw cap by mm -hmm. New Zealand. You got New Zealand and Australia trying to get those wines from yep. the South Pacific all the way to the mm. Americas and beyond and not spoil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have those, you know, corks creating sometimes the spaces and air getting in. So mm -hmm. like, hey, we need to figure out another way to make sure the wines stay fresh. Yeah. Like, what type of closure it has, we don't need no yeah. air getting yeah. Right. That and also with Australian wine um, and even New Zealand, for them trying to get cork, cork only comes yes. from one place. So for them trying to get cork, the cost to buy cork and put a cork, you know, in their bottles was so great, their wine became, you know, their wine would be too expensive and nobody would be interested in buying it. Like, yeah. like you're not looking to Australia for a $40 bottle of wine. Right. They're able to keep their classic. price points low because we just screwing that top off. That's the classic reason that That's drives change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's all about the dollar. Huh. Or the euro or the whatever. Yeah. Wow. So do we have uh, I appreciate this conversation, ladies. Yeah, um, this was great. This was right. Great. We went from boxes to screw tops to different yeah. types of wine to different yeah. packaging to uh, what looks like a water bottle. So I'm about to carry this around with me for a while. So <laughs> you're about to see this in IG a few times. Um, right. anyone have any comments or anything? Oh, go ahead. I hate to give this away, but that bottle is great to get wine and stuff in on cruise ships. Yes. Amen. Mm. Yes. To get it in where? Cruise, cruise ships. ships. Cruise ships. Oh, yes. Yeah. You pay for all it's, your food and, you know, and yep. what I hear, I don't particularly care for cruising because I like to get where I'm going and then experience. But what I hear from friends who have cruise is that the Alcohol, so expensive. Check out your bills. But you know what, Glennis, you can bring now up to two or three two bottles. bottles. It's oh, two yeah. bottles for Royal Caribbean. <laughs> oh, fantastic. and I will tell you only because, um, you know, of course, I'll just say some friends of mine told me, but you know, I did do a cruise a couple years ago, but um, I had to order, you know, or I saw these flask bottles. They're flat, clear, you know, that they don't they don't take the shape of a bottle. It's okay. malleable. Right. And everybody said, put your alcohol in that, put it in your right. suitcase, and then it yeah, can't detect tight. it. <laughs> similar, to, <laughs> similar to the water bottle phenomenon. You know, just to piggyback on what Glennis was saying, because i got to be honest, when you look at those prices for cruise lines and what the alcohol packages cost, That's what it, it is. is ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, oh. Liz. Okay. Oh. Uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, no, thanks, Stacey. No problem. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thanks, thanks Stacey. Bye, Stacey. All right, bye. Oh. All right. Uh, who's talking? Okay. I don't remember. I think it was you, Melissa. Uh, it was Melissa. Melissa well, we were cruising. just talking about cruises. I mean, just in yeah. general, and just it's so cost prohibitive. Because right. um, I mean, the last cruise I went on, I took my two full bottles, and I took it down to dinner, and there were no issues there. But it was just the alcohol, like the spirits packages, and buying a bottle of wine on the boat that were way too expensive. Right. So, yeah. I echo Glennis. That's why I was asking, you know, Tanisha about this water bottle. Like, could you take it on an airplane? Could you take it on a cruise ship? You know. Mm. 
Real Does talk. I mean, feel? once I take like the label can come off. So like once I, you know, soak this off, like it just looks like a regular just bottle. And then yeah, I have white wine in it. You know what it looks like, like? It looks like an olive oil bottle. Yes. It girl, does. I was saying, yeah. it a big olive oil bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know we've gone down a total different path with that piece of the conversation. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. But no, what did you guys, um, I wanted to ask you guys a question before we end. Um, did you all, as you were looking for these non-traditional formats, did you find anything that you were super surprised by or blown away by or just never expected to see? I mean, I know for me, when I went into Corks and Kegs, kind of this local retailer, I couldn't believe how limited the selection was. You know, I was talking like seven items or less that might kind of fit the genre. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. saw things that kind of surprised you or wowed you or you were super stoked about. Hmm. Well, I think, Melissa, too, the other thing is this acceptance. It's still taking a lot for people to accept these alternative methods. So once that is greater, then you'll see a diverse grouping of how things are bottled. Yeah. That's true. Right. That's true. Hmm. Um, for me, I saw a lot, a lot more box wine than I ever anticipated. Like I said, I just took pictures of all of them because <clears throat> we're so far beyond Canyon Oaks and Franzia. Mm -hmm. We're just so mm -hmm. beyond that. And there were a lot of boxes that also make bottles. So, you know, I thought that was interesting. Now, for the cans, um, I just happened to remember that I had seen a can before. Um, if I had actually went and searched for it, I, I don't know if I would have ever found it. There's I also wonder... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a can wine out of Oregon that was just too cost prohibitive to get here for this um, particular hangout but if you get a chance it's called the Oregon Wine Company and oh, it's not. do they have a truck? I know that you asked well, me questions. Oh, well, you and your wife, oh, I know since you well, looked it up the they please have a truck. Oh okay I wonder what has a truck. Okay I'm like somebody yeah. in Oregon has a truck. Yeah. Okay sorry. Mm -hmm. It's the Oregon Wine Company, and um, from what I understand, the wine is phenomenal in that can. Okay. So I can't wait to, you know, you know, let it come across the country at a normal pace, at a de decent price. Right. But it's kind of with the varietal is that they use, uh, that they put in the can, but here it's great. It might, that... Is Underwood from Oregon? I'm sorry. To... It is from Oregon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, just one quick thing um, about you mentioning what we surprised by. I wonder if the amount of box wines that, um, like that you all saw or that I saw in the store, I wonder if that is relating to the season, how they're more out now mm -hmm. because we're in spring and summer. And people are like more apt to probably buy it now as opposed mm -hmm. to in October, November. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe like, you know, football season, like they might get it like starting then. But like in the uh -huh. full winter, you know, there may not be as much. So I'd actually mm -hmm. want to revisit this and kind of see how much yeah. box wine we uh -huh. see, you know, in the fall, in the winter. That's, That's true. And also, yeah. Yeah, what do the varietals look like? I assume those shift. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say, mm -hmm. of those limited options I saw, I did see most of them were box wine and most of them were red. I was uh, kind of surprised, you know, yeah. given it was, you know, I mean, June. The, I, don't, I don't think the whites can hold up. I don't mm. think they have the structure to withstand. I, I do. Ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, I think that tannin, I think that tannin from the skins and everything probably does uh -huh. do a little something to it. And if they did any kind of oak, even if it wasn't like full barrel, even if it was just like oak yeah. chip, that will still add something more. I don't, um, to I don't know what Boda Box, you have no Boda Box, right? Yeah. I don't know yes. what they're doing, but at Total Wine, they had at least ten, uh, ten different varietals. What? Uh, they had half, half whites, they make a Riesling Moscato and... Just all these whites, and then they make all these reds. So I'm like, what in the world? How is this? I don't know how they're doing it. I have no idea. Ooh, but good for them. They're doing though. it. Yeah. I think they have a dedicated following. Like if you're gonna yeah, go box, you, yeah. are, you are dedicated. Yeah. 
Yeah, and their wine's not That's half true. bad. Yeah, it's not half bad. You know what? Mm -hmm. That is true. That you bring up a good point, especially when you deal in Oregon because it's cult like. Mm -hmm. You have different. Mm -hmm. Following, especially in Oregon, because Oregon has those different sect of people that yeah. just yeah onto something and it becomes theirs and it grows with them. So, right. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting perspective. And then I had one more question. I'm so sorry, but like for like Sarita, our bubbles lover, and some of the others that love bubbles, the only thing my de facto was going to be to get Sophia. Uh -huh. I love Sophia. Uh -huh. Did anybody come across anything else that bubbles in a non-traditional format? Bubbles in a non-traditional format. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Sophia was the only one that I even knew yeah. about. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. No, not me. Oh, you know I didn't. They ain't playing with that out here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm, girl, I, mean, no. I didn't see anything like kava, you know, nothing no. prosecco, nothing uh -uh. that had any sort yeah. of effervescence. Mm -mm. Yeah. I couldn't even find anything in a can. Yeah, I couldn't find anything in a can um, here. Cause, and I actually wow. did several Google searches because, you know, I'm like on it with the Google. So I figured if I didn't find it in a Google search, and then I'm like, I'm not about to ask for it because y'all not going to look at me like, I'm crazy because I need to go back to. So I can't, y'all can't look at me like I'm this silly American trying to get anything. Wow. Um, but like Don't I know bad. they're so resistant to certain things. I'm like, they're not putting this wine in no can. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't feel bad, Tanisha. I asked the people at the store if I could make my own mixed box of monkey theorem, infinite monkey theorem, so I could have some whites and some rose together. He yeah, looked girl. at me like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, is that a third hit? Like, but, but like, as a consumer, do I need four bottles of, you know, four cans of rosé? I want, you know, kind of two white wines. I want I mean, two. Uh -huh. If you got right. three other friends right. you want to drink with. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting because Zips do give you yeah. the options of, of having all reds. That's right. Mixed, mixed case. reds. Uh -huh. um, a variety pack of all four. That's what'll right. set them apart too. Yeah, yep. that that's a, yeah. Maybe some of the others will start doing do. that going forward. But exactly. Yeah. That's what you do with beer. I mean, you can make your own six pack and make your own four pack. So yeah. I just thought it would be, you know, I was like, hey, I'd love to mix and match and try more at the same time. And they look at you like, no. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> but he didn't know what flask was either. So I was like, never mm. mind. Mm. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. Wow. Well, all wow. right. Not to shut y'all well, down completely, but uh, it's four. So it's um, I'm about yeah. to. Well, this was great, guys. Thank this you so really much. Good. Yeah. Thanks all for who are watching. Bye, ladies. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Good night. Cheers. Bye.